Hello, and welcome to this V-Suite version 0.6. Yes, I finally get to say 0.6, and I hope that makes you half as happy as it makes me. Uh, in this video tutorial, which is the first of the 0.6 series, I'm not going to talk about anything particularly interesting here. I'm just going to talk about um, installation of uh, the V-Suite, which is a little bit different now than it was for 0 0.4. And uh, just a little bit about some of the um, sort of new interface elements um, and some of the new things to think about when using uh, 0 0.6 series compared to 0 0.4. So 0 0.6 is currently supported for Blender 2.83 LTS, long-term support version. Uh, I think at the time that I'm making this video, 2.83.9 is the latest Blender version. Uh, in theory, it should work for any of the 2.83 series. I'm going to use 2.83.9 here. Um, it, the, it may work for the 2.9 series. Um, I've used it a little bit on the 2.90 and it seemed to work okay as, as far as I used it. Um, but your mileage may vary. And um, at the moment, I'm only really supporting uh, 2.83. Uh, I think 0.6.1 will probably work with the 2.9 series. So, I've downloaded through whatever mechanism of my operating system provides 2.83 of Blender, and I've opened 2.83 of Blender, and we can see that um, I've got what is pretty much the default Blender interface. 3D viewport, animation timeline, um, outliner collections, and our properties panels with tabs down the side for us to pick uh, the various categories of properties panels. So first things first, I need to install vSuite version 0 0.6. So a difference in 0 0.6 compared to 0 0.4 is that whereas for 0 0.4, I provided a complete sort of Blender and vSuite combined download, in 0 0.6, the vSuite now functions or is uh, packaged just as an add-on. So you can download and install Blender through your um, normal operating system mechanism. And now we can install vSuite 0 0.6 purely as an add-on through the regular uh, add-on install process. So first off, I'm going to go to the GitHub page for version 0 0.6. I'll put this link in the video description below. Um, but once you go to the GitHub page for vSuite version 0 0.6, and it is just this vSuite 0 0.6 one we want at the moment, then we will see obviously all the code and the changes that's been happening to the code. But we have this green button here called code. And if I come, if I click on that button and I come to the bottom, I'll see this download zip option. So I'm just going to select that and I'm going to put that in my download folder, replace the one that I downloaded previously. So the B Suite is quite a big add on because it has built into it Radiance and Energy Plus installations for Windows, OS X, and Linux. So this will take a little while to download. But let's just have a look now at how we install a zip file as an add-on within Blender. So if I come to Edit Preferences, and I'm in my Add-ons tab here on the left, then I've got a list of all the currently installed 
add-ons or installable add-ons. And if I click on this install button up here, I'll get a file dialog to select a zip file. Now, let me just see. Yeah, that is now downloaded in my downloads folder. So if I now click install here, go to my downloads folder. And if I scroll down, vsuite 06 minus master.zip. So I can click install add-on. Now that, because the vSuite, because it has the Energy Plus and Radiance installations built in, it's quite big. And so it can take a little while once I've selected that zip file for Blender to decompress that zip file, put it in the right place, and then present an option to activate that add-on, activate the vSuite add-on. And I activate it by clicking on this little square right next to it. So if I click on that square, what will happen is on Linux, because I have to use a little trick on Linux to access some third-party libraries. On Linux, Blender will restart. So Blender's just restarted. And if I go back to preferences, I should now see, if I come down to import export, that this vSuite um, option has still not been selected. But if I now select that, and again, selecting this can take a little while for uh, Blender to sort of register all the files. But um, after that little pause, it should now be activated. So on Linux, you might have to select Blender or restart and select it again. On OS X and Windows, the first time you select this little square after the requisite amount of time, um, it should then just instantly activate. So once this square has a tick in it, the vSuite's now been activated. And if I save my preferences, the vSuite will be, will be activated for any Blender file I subsequently open. I can click on this little triangle here, and that will open up some information about the vSuite, and it will present some options here. None of these are strictly required. Um, but they can be set by the user um, should you need to or want to. So we have options here to set the Radiance binary directory. The Radiance binaries are built into the vSuite, so this can be left um, empty. But you can select here the directory that contains all the binaries of uh, Radiance that you downloaded for your system. Now, bear in mind, the, the vSuite has been tested with Radiance 5.3. It's in the user manual. I think it's Radiance 5.3 and Energy Plus 9.3. So if you install a different version than those supported versions, and you're kind of on your own, but you can do that. So uh, that's a Radiance binary directory. We also can select the Radiance library directory. We can select an Energy Plus binary directory. We can select an Energy Plus weather directory. This one you probably, if you're doing Energy Plus simulations with Envy, this one you probably will want to change because the vSuite only comes with one weather file built in. Um, so if you have a directory somewhere with your weather files in, it's usually a good idea to specify that directory here. And on Linux only, there is the option to set an open foam binary directory. Now, open foam doesn't come incorporated into the vSuite. So if you want to do open foam analysis and you're using a Linux operating system, then you need to set the binary directory for open foam here. And that binary directory is a directory that contains the foam exec file. So yeah, none of these have to be set, but you can have your own custom software directory set up here if you wish. So now that the add-on has been activated, we don't see any real differences here in the Blender interface until we start to change some of these windows. So Blender's 
got what's called a non-overlapping interface. So windows kind of sit side by side rather than on top of each other. And each of these windows can be changed into any other kind of window. And it's usually with this icon at the left of the header bar for a particular window area. So that header bar can sometimes be at the bottom of a window area rather than at the top. But um, on this animation timeline, for example, the header bar is at the top. And this left hand icon would allow me to change this animation timeline window into any other kind of window. So I'm going to change it to VSuite nodes. Now, when we activated the add-on, we'll have created three new window types. One is VSuite nodes, one is MV network, and one is MV material. So um, we don't necessarily often have to directly sort of select MV network and MV material because there's a, another mechanism to sort of relate to these, which I'll show you in a moment. But we do generally want to click on VSuite nodes. And we will see we've got a node editor window. But there is no node tree. And there's no ability to add nodes. They're all grayed out. What I have to do first is I have to, assuming I don't have any node trees set up in this editor window so far, I click New here. And if I click New, I'll have a new node tree called unsurprisingly, no tree. So once I've created that and it's selected within this menu, now I can add nodes. So a very basic VSuite node is a VI location node, which sets a location in terms of latitude and longitude for the uh, analysis that we're going to be doing. So one change over vSuite 0 0.4 is that instead of having different windows within one node editor window, there were some icons at the bottom here, which allowed you to switch between vSuite nodes and NV nodes and etc. But because they're now separate windows in two point, Blender 2.8, and they have to be separate windows, it's a bit cumbersome to keep switching between NV materials and NV network and VSuite nodes. So on the right hand side, and you can toggle this sidebar with the N key. On the right hand side, we have this sidebar panel and we should see a tab in there called VSuite. And if I click on that, and this, ta this tab will exist in NV network and MV material and in VSuite nodes. And this tab presents a menu that would allow me to switch between different node trees created within either the VSuite nodes editor, the MV networks node editor, or the MV materials node editor. Now I've got no MV network set up at the moment and I've got no MV material set up at the moment. So they're blank. All I've got is this original node tree and every time i create a node tree then an icon will appear here and i can select from here that node tree within the relevant node editor window so this is just a quick way sometimes when you're doing envy analysis you need to switch between these different node trees to make differences to your materials or to your envy network and this is a handy way to just switch between them so Another change that I'll highlight here is that because Blender 2.8 has introduced a concept of collections, so instead of organizing objects on layers, we can now um, organize objects in collections. And we have one, um, we have an overall scene collection and we have one collection within that scene collection. So if I was to, for example, create a new collection and call it new. Now with that new collection selected, if I create any object, if I create a plane, we can see that that plane has gone into the new collection. 
Now, this is something to be aware of because the V suite uh, 0.6 now creates sometimes its own collections. It creates collections to store um, energy plus geometry or to store results from lighting analyses. So it's always a good idea to keep an eye on your collections because if you put geometry that you've created into a collection which has been created by the V-Suite, the V-Suite might do stuff to the objects in that collection that you don't want to happen to your geometry. So make sure that your geometry that you create goes in the collection you want it to go into and not into a uh, sort of dedicated V-Suite collection. And um, as subsequent, as I do subsequent video tutorials, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but it's worth being aware of that now. If something seems to be not working in the V-Suite, say for example, a particular piece of geometry is not being exported for a lighting analysis, then just check where that geometry is and that it's not in a, a V-Suite collection. Um, in our properties panels, there are two main places where we have V-Suite interface elements. In this object properties panel, which is this little square one here, we will see V-Suite object definition section. And within that, we can specify what kind of object so a particular blender object, this cube, for example, what this cube object is in terms of the V-suite. Whether it has an object level, no particular designation, which is what we tend to use for lighting analysis, or whether that object is to define a set of NV or energy plus surfaces, a CFD domain, CFD geometry, a lighting array, or a complex fenestration system if we're working with radiance BSDFs. We can also specify what this overall geometric entity does at a material level. So this defines what this cube does at object level. We can also define what this cube does at material level. And that happens in this V-suite material section within the material properties tab. And here we can set whether that material is a geometry for general radiance analysis, whether it's a light sensor, so that it's a place where we're sensing lighting levels in a lighting analysis, uh, whether that material specifies a particular kind of um, flow V boundary for open foam analysis. Um, and we also have um, a button down here to create NV nodes. So a new, another new change in version 0 0.6 is that when we define a material, a blender material, in terms of NV construction properties, we don't now have a list of menus here. We now have this Create NV Nodes button. And with this default material, if I cl click this Create NV Nodes button, you will see that under MB materials, I now have this material node. And I'll talk about this in the subsequent NV tutorials, but just to sort of demonstrate the point, I can now switch between material, NV construction, NV material, and my back to my um, overall V suite node tree. So. Is there anything else I need to say at this particular moment in time? I don't think so. I think that covers just about everything about installation and some of the new interface elements for 0 0.6. So, okay, thanks for watching.